and Shreya will be talking about geological model building using machine learning and also with the back of uh, cross track of domain expertise as well. Um, thank you so much for introducing. So my name is Shreya and today I'll be talking on uh, ML-based geological model building, uh, specifically in the Illinois Basin. So um, if you remember from Feng's talk, uh, he identified a two-layer model uh, using the autocorrelation. And so uh, diving further into this, uh, we'll see if is it possible to identify the sublayers using machine learning algorithms. And if so, can then the machine learning algorithm identify these some geophysical properties of these sublayers? And so to answer this questions, we employ HDB scan, which is a density-based uh, clustering algorithm to see if the, this algorithm can uh, identify the sublayers in the study area that we are looking at. So the study area that we are looking at is the Illinois Basin. So this is our study area. This is the cross section that we see from Northern Illinois to Southern Illinois. Um, and we will be looking at data from uh, Illinois Basin Decatur project, which is the in injection site right here. Uh, since it's a basin, so the geology won't vary too much. And we know that it's a sedimentary basin. So it has all kinds of sedimentary rocks. Um, so moving on, uh, the well logs that we got had a number of data. So we did a bunch of processing, uh, like uh, we did out in your removal. Uh, we did some data smoothing uh, using um, the window size of three meters. Then we did some resource normalization to bring all our parameters, which is density, P waves, and S waves on a single platform or, a, or on a single scale. Uh, then we uh, did our clustering, which is the LBD scan clustering. And to see if our clustering is uh, stable, we did the bootstrap uh, stability analysis. And then after all of this, to see if, uh, if what our cluster means and to, uh, to stick them with a geological significance or geological property, we then did the feature analysis of our clustering. Uh, so uh, what is clustering? What happens in clustering? So basically what happens is, uh, Sorry, uh, we see that there are a bunch of points. So it computes the distances between the values. And if the values are similar enough, it clusters them into one, one clusters. Uh, that will be your first level of clustering. And then uh, it continues to keep on clustering. If the clusters are uh, closer together, it clusters them into one clusters. So uh, we can stop this at any point when our uh, desired number of clusters is reached. So this is our hierarchical uh, density-based clustering. This is a very robust clustering method. Um, um, it does not assume any geometry or a shape which we want for our geological sublayer interpretation. So moving on, this is our geological uh, clustering method. This is our interpretive uh, diagram. Uh, we see depth, density, and P wave moving average, and we get seven clusters here. To make this 3D uh, diagram more simple, uh, we then plot this into a depth versus clustering. And here, what we see is this is uh, basically the noise that the SDB scanner has identified. And so, from one through seven, we see that it has uh, it has identified a cluster with a respective depth. So we see that this cluster has a respective depth, then this cluster has a respective depth, but then there are some clusters with overla overlapping depths. So then what we do is we segment these depths and see which cluster dominates which depth. And for example, um, sorry, for example, if we see here, uh, we see that cluster seven is dominating from a depth of 100 meters to 200 meters. So uh, when we analyze this entire thing, we get this um, rough thickness of which cluster uh, has what kind of thickness. For example, we see that cluster seven uh, has a thickness of around 200 meters. And then after that, uh, uh, from the well logs, we're using density, P wave, and S wave uh, velocity. 
and we do the manual interpretation, which is Elita's interpretation. So this is from the uh, eye of uh, a geophysicist. And so she's uh, identified these four sublayers uh, from our 2000 meter uh, profile. And she got uh, this uh, four layers um, with uh, pattern recognition from the eye of uh, someone who, is no, who's no, who knows signal processing. And then this is my interpretation of, uh, of what the sublayers look like. So I got these roughly eight layers. Um, so I, I saw what uh, these slight density changes uh, or these slight P waves uh, or drastic P wave changes. And according to that, I identified these sublayers. And then we move on to see uh, what kind of uh, interpretation did our machine, le machine learning algorithm showed us. And it's this. So our machine learning algorithm gave us around uh, 12 to 13 layers uh, from our uh, 2000 meter depth profile. It identified uh, small changes uh, in our uh, in our uh, depth P wave velocities or S wave velocities, and then it clustered uh, these uh, different kinds of sublayers. But it doesn't mean anything. Uh, till we don't uh, assign any geological meaning to these clusters. So then moving on, um, assigning a, assi doing the summary statistics and assigning geological meaning to these clusters. Uh, so here we, we did some, some summary statistics and we see um, some blocks, box plots. So what these box plots show us is, uh, so for example, for cluster one, uh, we see that this box plots here, they have a bit of a tight distribution. That means that the values of P waves, S waves, and density were closer together, which means that uh, the layer must be homogeneous. And also we see that uh, the density is higher, the S wave velocity is also higher, and this uh, P wave velocity is also higher, which means that it must be compact or a dense rock. Uh, then uh, let's say for cluster six, uh, we see a higher distribution here, uh, also higher distribution for P wave and S wave, which means it must be a heterogeneous layer since the values are so far apart. And also the density values, the S wave values and the P wave values are lower, uh, which means that it must be uh, maybe a softer material or a softer rock. So then, uh, since now we've assigned each cluster a geological uh, a geological characteristics, uh, and from uh, from the literature view of uh, knowing the depth and the types of rocks, we then uh, correlate this um, thickness cluster and cluster characteristics with the geology of the area. So uh, since we know the depth of each uh, or the thickness of each of the layer we correlate each of the thickness and see if the cluster characteristics match the type of the rocks. So for the first, um, for the first 200 meters, we see that it's, uh, our algorithm has assigned cluster seven, which uh, the characteristics of which is uh, soft or highly porous rocks. And uh, we see here that it's largely shale, sandstone, some coal, uh, again, shale, um, some siltstone. These rocks also have uh, characteristics of being um, soft. And then again, we see uh, that there are again some some rocks. Uh, for example, this uh, the next four hundred uh, next six hundred meters shows that it has heterogeneous. Uh, it's moderately hard, and we get a transition zone or heterogeneous zone again. Uh, so we profile all these rocks and all these clusters, and then we know that the pre-Cambrian basement is around maybe 2,200 meters from here. Um, so moving on, um, we so now we know that uh, our uh, machine learning algorithm, our clustering algorithm, can identify some of the geological layers. Um, within the cluster. So our clusters uh, I have identified the geophysical properties of uh, the rocks. 
and uh, we can verify the geological models if our clusters uh, represent the depth of what we know from the geology of the area. It can validate the geological models that already exist. And if not, if the clusters do not assign uh, with the do not assign with the depth of the geological modeling, it can also uh, we can also say that maybe there is an anomaly of some sort of something. Um, so now we know that uh, ML these machine learning algorithm gives useful insight about the data distribution within our sublayers. And so, but associating these clusters with the geology also requires human interpretation and the domain expertise. Uh, so for future work, I uh, we can incorporate this data set for P wave, S wave, and density with some geophysical logs like gamma rays, sensitivity, uh, to get a bigger picture, to get a, a really big overview uh, of what the cluster uh, cluster definition is and how it can more uh, properly identify the sublayers. And then we can combine this with a more comprehensive seismic uh, data to see uh, to see if we get a bigger picture and a more distinct sublayers. These are some of my references. Thank you.